Hello, everybody. How are y'all doing on tonight? God bless you real good. Is my prayer. It's my prayer that you started the year 2024 uh, in such a way to where God is really, really, really using you and he's ministering to you and that you're seeking him uh, the way you should. Amen. Because all of us should always understand where our blessings come from. Amen. And our blessings come from the Lord. Amen. It's by his grace. It's by his mercy. Uh, we, you know, we blame the alarm clock. <laughs> we blame the children. You know, we, we blame uh, certain noises for waking us up. But uh, let me tell you something. If the Lord had not allowed you to live and breathe on this morning, amen, you wouldn't have got up. Amen. So we've got to always give him praise and give him thanks for all that he does and just for being able to breathe, amen, and live and move and have our being, amen. I completely apologize, amen, uh, for being tardy on tonight, amen, but I pray to God, amen, that you're still locked in and that we're still able to minister to you the way the Lord has placed upon our heart to minister to you on tonight. God bless you real good. Amen. I'll go ahead and do roll call. Amen. Sister Clara. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Sister Cindy? Hello, Sister Pam. How you doing on tonight? Amen. Happy New Year to you all. Amen. 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 How you doing? Sister Sandra, good evening. Sister Evelyn, how are you on tonight? Hey, Sister Felicia, how are you? Amen. Hey, Brother Darren, how you doing, brother? Amen. Good to see you, man. Uh, Sister Nancy, Amen. Amen. Good to see you all on tonight. Hey, my mother-in-law. Hey, how you doing on tonight? God bless you real good is my prayer. Amen. Amen. And amen again. God bless you all. Amen. Good to see you all. Amen. I think I got everybody. Amen. I hope I didn't miss nobody. I think I got everybody. Amen. I think I see Sister Caroline. Amen. Y'all pray my strength in the law for Sister Caroline. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Those ushers are something else. Amen. And they give their pastor a hard time. Amen. But we thank God for Sister Caroline. God bless you on tonight. Amen. And amen again. Amen. Good to see you all. Uh, on tonight. Hey, uh, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> Who's that? Hey, Brother Darius, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. How, uh, amen. <laughs> amen. On tonight, uh, we're going to get into what God has laid upon our heart to share on tonight. And we pray it's a blessing uh, to you on tonight. Amen. I'm going to, amen. I'm going to share something on tonight. Amen. I remember my uncle's uh, Many of you know that my uncles had, uh, uh, and my, my brother was a part of the group of the brothers, cousins, uh, uncles, all a part of that singing group. And so, you know, uh, a lot of what they did kind of, you know, rubbed off on pastor. Amen. Um, because, you know, you cannot forget those things that God put in your life uh, as you go what along your way. And so that's this song uh, that they used to sing. Amen. Uh, my uncle, uh, Othus. Uh, Othus Dooms uh, used to sing this song. Many of you, if you watched our uh, our live for our homecoming service, uh, he sang a song on that night, uh, and uh, I think he shared the song. If the if the robins can say thank you, <laughs> you should do it too. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that was one song uh, that he sung on that evening. But uh, there's another song, and he just talked. It was a song about prayer. Amen. It just you know, and it was a song basically just saying. Um, knowing what prayer can do. Amen. Knowing what prayer can do. And I, I don't know about you, but uh, as a believer, something about prayer. Amen. Seeking God and, and just, you know, going after him and just saying, Lord, I need you right now. You know, it's something about that when God answers and when God allows you to sense his presence and when God allows you to just, you know, be in the same place he is and know that he's there. Amen. It's amazing. Amen. And so um, I just thank God, amen, for, for him and that song and him blessing me. Uh, throughout my life uh, with that song and I'm going to share that song on tonight. You ready, Chris? I know what prayer can do. Yeah. <laughs> I know what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. Yeah. I know what prayer can do. I found the answer in prayer. Yeah. 
and I'll sit everywhere. Hey, oh, I know, yes, I know, I know what prayer can do. Prayer can heal the sick. Hey, yeah, <laughs> prayer can raise the dead. <laughs> Mama, I remember, I remember one day, five thousand souls he fed. I found the answer in prayer. Hey, and I sit everywhere. Oh, I know, yeah. Oh, I know, I know what prayer can do. You know, you know prayer. Hey, prayer. Oh, Lord, prayer. Prayer changes things. You know prayer. Hey, prayer. Yeah, prayer. Prayer changes things. I was out here. Yeah. All alone the sea. Hey, watch this. Out on a, on a stormy sea. Out on a stormy sea. Watch it now. Hey, but I found the answer in prayer. Hey, and I'll tell it everywhere. Oh, I know. Yes, I know. I know what prayer can do. Come on, Chris, play a while. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's all right, man. Help yourself. <laughs> yeah, oh, Lord, 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 hey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know what prayer can do. <laughs> I know what prayer can do. Hey, I know what prayer can do. Yeah, I know what prayer can do. I found the answer in prayer. Hey, and I tell it everywhere. Woo. Oh, I know. Hey, watch me. Yes, I know. Hey, oh, I know. Yes, I know. Oh, I know, I know. I know, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, yes, I know. Do you know? Yes, I know. Do you know? Oh, yes, I know. Do you know? Oh, yes, I know. Do you know? Oh, yes, I know. Oh, I know what prayer can do. Give God some praise on tonight. Amen, 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 and amen again. Amen. I don't know about you, but I thank God for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody out there on the night? can testify that you know what prayer can do because you know who you're praying to. <laughs> Amen and praise the Lord. He is a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He's a true God. He's a real God. Amen. And he's the one and only true and living God. He's our creator. He's our maker. Amen. He's our beginning and our end. Amen. The alpha and omega. We thank God for being God. Amen. And we've got to give him praise for being who he is. Amen. And we've got to understand even, you know, in our in our minds and in our lives and the stuff that we experience and we go through, we give we give life and we give people and we give the things that we see too much credit. When you know you serve a God where there's nothing, what, too hard for him, amen, he created the heavens and the earth, he created you and I, amen, he set everything in motion. When you know you serve, amen, that God, amen, can I help you? Nothing, amen, 
man, nothing should come along to shake you to the point to make you feel as though, amen, there's nothing that God can do for you, amen, because of who he is, amen. So we've got to get to a point, people of God, to where, guess what? We stop just worshiping God, amen, when we feel it's all good or we feel he's done this for us, that for Give him praise and honor for what? For who he is, what? Knowing that no matter what may come about, he's stronger, he's bigger, he's better than anything we're going to come across, amen, and praise the Lord. So we've got to give him praise, we've got to give him honor, and we've got to give him glory anyhow, <laughs> amen, anyhow, amen, not just when, we feel as though we want to know, praise him even when you don't feel like it. You know why? Because guess what? We've got to understand what he's done for us. He saved our soul. He, he sent Christ to die for us on Calvary's cross. Can I help you? What if you didn't feel like <laughs> saving our soul? What if he didn't feel like sending his only begotten son? What if he didn't feel like waking you up this morning? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So you ought to what? You ought to praise him what? In it. In it. Anyhow, amen, amen, and amen again. We thank God. We just thank God, amen, for being God. And we thank God for just being so good, so kind, so gracious, and so merciful on tonight. Amen. On tonight, amen, we're going to continue our study on tonight, amen. And um, we're going to uh, try to, <laughs> I'm going to try to um, finish up. Uh, on the uh, the lesson on um, the healthy home. I'm going to try to finish up on it on tonight, but you've got to understand um, that this is something that the Lord laid heavy. He laid it heavy on my heart only because he helped me to understand that when we have healthier homes, watch me now, hear me and hear me well. When we have healthier homes, Amen. We'll have healthier communities. Amen. And praise the Lord. And when we have healthy homes, we'll have healthier churches. Amen. And praise the Lord. And when we have healthier homes, we'll have what? We'll have healthier societies. Amen. And praise the Lord. And it all begins at home. Amen. And praise the Lord. And so God laid this so heavy on my heart. Amen. And uh, he said, just just teach it until. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so that's why we're probably two months in maybe. And we're still dealing with the healthy home. Because let's be honest. And let's be real. Homes all over this place. All over this world. All over this state. All over this country. Are broken. Homes are broken. That's why you see the crime that you see. That's why you see the destitute that you see. That's why you see the things happening in our world today because homes are broken. Amen. Homes are broken. But God showed me that if we if we work on making our homes healthier, we'll have a world where people will begin to look at life Look at themselves, look at each other, look at people the way they should. Amen. And praise the Lord. It all starts at, it starts at home. Amen. And praise the Lord. So on tonight, I'm going to deal with that, that idea of, of home. Um, there's some things I'm going to touch on on tonight. Amen. Um, and, and it's some things that can get kind of, ugh, you know, it's like, it's kind of tricky, kind of sticky. But at the same time, uh, we got to deal with it because it's our world today. It's what we're dealing with uh, in today's time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share some things with us on tonight. And I pray it blesses you uh, in some way. I, I, I pray it leads and guides you uh, in the direction you need to go. And just put something on your mind to where you can receive it, but also go to the word and, and, and confirm what God has said and then allow the word not just to be a memory, amen, in your mind, but let it be something that makes you move, amen, and uh, allows you to move forward in life and understand that, guess what, walking in faith is not easy because when everybody else, amen, praise the Lord, come with me if you can. When everybody else is going by their own rules or they're going by rules that they've made up themselves or, or they're going by things that they've heard and they're not going and abiding by the word of God. When you step out 
and you go to walk the walk and talk the talk as a Christian, it's going to be hard for you sometimes. Why, preacher? Because you're going against the grain. Now, mind you, you're actually working and operating it in a way to where God really designed it the way the way it needed to be. You're operating the way God really wanted it to be. But people, society, time and things and, 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 and selfish ambition and people's own minds and lean into their own understanding. They've come up with things. So where now, you know, when a person seeks to do the will of God, something's wrong with them. When they when they abide by what God is saying, something is wrong with them. So when they go to do what is right by, in God's sight, something is wrong with them. You know why? Because they're not operating off of what God has said. They're operating and leaning to their own understanding and the world standards. Amen. And so as as Christians, we've got to be brave enough, bold enough, and have enough faith to walk in the principles and the truth of God's word and let it be what it is. And we can start at our homes. That's one place we have limited control over is in our house. Amen. And so we start at home. Amen. We can allow it to begin to radiate what? where we go and what we do in the Bible. Let me know we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So you know what? God, let me know that no matter what you may think or others may tell you, you have influence. You know why? Because you've got the Holy Spirit living within you. And God has given you a gift. He's given you power. Amen. Now I'm not coming across as one and saying, oh, you got the power to say this. No, don't, don't take it that way. Don't run with that. No, but he has given you supernatural power, a gift. To be able to influence the environment around you. Amen. And praise the Lord. And so God really wants us to take him at his word. So that we're able to do what? Impact and influence our surroundings. Amen. And not allow our surroundings to impact and influence us. Amen. And praise and praise the Lord. So we're going to uh, we're going to pray on tonight. And then we'll get into We'll get into the word. Amen. Dear God, we say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be here on tonight. Thank you, Lord, for Lord just being there by our side. Lord, thank you, dear God, for just being our God. We pray tonight that you have your way. Lord, move, touch, deliver, heal, restore, whatever you have to do so that, dear God, Lord, the body of Christ is edified, the sinner is saved, and the kingdom of God is built. And that, Lord, that your name, Lord, is lifted up on high, and you get the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we bless your name on tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would just watch over your servants. Lord, give us the strength, the ability we need. Fill us with your spirit so that we're able to minister to your people, Lord, so that their lives are richer, so that their lives are better, and so that, God, you get the glory, honor, and praise out of what we do. We thank you, we adore you, and we love you, Lord. It is in the mighty, blessed, and precious, and wonderful name of Jesus, we do pray. And all that love the Lord said, amen, 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 and amen again. Amen. On tonight, uh, I want you to turn uh, your Bibles Turn your Bibles to. Um, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go to a scripture, right? And um, I'm not gonna stay long on it because I just don't want to stay long on it. But it's something that um, it's something that I, I just I just was led to share, and, and, and it's gonna be quick. Uh, but it's it's just something that I'm led to share because in, in many cases, uh, in many cases, um, many people don't understand that the home. Uh, the home begins, the home begins with husband and wife. Uh, that's that's kind of where it begins. Now, we're going to talk about a lot of things on tonight. And so you got to understand, I know not every home is set up that way. And so we're going to also talk about some things uh, as it relates to that as well. And so we're going to kind of try to put things together uh, to where we can kind of look at our lives and the way things are from a biblical view. And allow the word of God to teach us and show us and uh, lead us what in the right in the right direction. Amen and praise the Lord. So just to start, uh, we're gonna go to um, uh, First Peter, First Peter chapter three, uh, and uh, we're gonna take a look at um, verses uh, one through seven. All right, First Peter, First Peter chapter three, verses one through seven. First Peter chapter three, uh, verses one. 
through 7, right? And so I'm going to read uh, that particular passage. Then I'm going to point out some things uh, as it relates to husband and wife, right? Husband and wife. And um, those who are aspiring to be married, those who are married, uh, these are some things uh, that husbands and wives ought to be mindful of and ought to uh, consider when conducting themselves in the home. Amen. Uh, and, and praise the Lord. And, and to even to uphold that, that, that role as husband and that role as wife. Um, because you've got to understand that one can call themselves something, but their actions may, some, may say something else. Amen and praise the Lord. They might, they might want the title or the tag, uh, but you know the stuff that they do uh, looks totally different than what they say they are. Amen uh, and, praise, and praise the Lord. So I just wanted to kind of uh, look at this right here, and, and I'm not going to stay long on it, but I just wanted to kind of deal with it because this applies to anyone thinking about getting married or any Anybody um, that's married already and want to fulfill their role uh, as husband or as wife. So I'm going to read uh, uh, verse uh, verses one through seven. Look what it says: Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without the word may be won by the conduct of their wives. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, do not let your adornment be merely outward arranging the hair, weaving gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is a very precious in the sight of God. For in this manner, in former times, the holy woman who trusted in God also adorned themselves being submissive to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being asked together the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Here we go. I want us to take a look at this, right? So it talks about the wife. Listen to me and listen to me well. When the Bible talks about the wife, it talks about some very key characteristics. Number one, it says this, let the wives be submissive to their own husbands. Now watch, we talked about that whole submission. That submission there. It's voluntary. It's not forced. So it's not something that the husband puts his foot down and puts fear in the wife and makes them, beats them into submission. Can I help you? That is unhealthy, that is toxic, and that is not of God. Amen and praise the Lord. So that submission there by the wife says that I'm going to honor this man because God gave him to me. And because God gave him a role to fulfill, I'm going to submit to him so he can fulfill the role that he has. It doesn't make me less. It doesn't make me the lesser. It doesn't make me, what, not equal to him. It just says says that I have a different role and it's for me to be submissive to him and allow him to be who God called him to be. So that submission just says that you realize you're not your own woman, right? And that God has given you a husband to lead you in the ways of God. Amen and praise the Lord. Well, pastor, you know, that's not my situation. But guess what? I didn't pick your husband and maybe God didn't pick your husband. Oh, Lord, pastor, you meddling. Well, it is what it is. But at the same time, God will hold you to, amen, he will hold you to being submissive, what, to your own husband. You shouldn't be going out and looking this one and getting advice from that one and that one from the other one and all this other stuff and, you know, calling other people. No, 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 to your own husband, amen. Go and get advice from this man, that man. No, 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 no. God gave you a husband. Be submissive to your husband. You got something going on in the house. Amen. Praise the Lord with the children, finance, or whatever it might be. You're not your own woman. Be submissive to your husband so y'all can be what? One. Amen. Be one. Because the two shall become what? One flesh. That's what the Bible says. Also, look what it says. It also says this. Is that really the woman ought to be one who does what? Who respects her husband. Amen. To respect her husband. Right? Why? Because the Bible clearly says that see that the woman respects her husband. You'll find that also what? In Ephesians. Right? You'll find that uh, in Ephesians where the woman or the wife is to respect the husband. Can, can I help you? Women, let me let you in on a little secret. Respect. Amen. In the eyes of the man is love. Rev, you messing around. I'm just saying. You could not take. You don't have to take my advice. All right, you don't. 
You don't have to take my advice. I'm just trying to help you. Amen. Respect the eyes of the man is love. Because you know what he says? If this woman is willing to treat me with honor and respect, she must love me. Amen and praise the Lord. You got to understand, we're wired differently. I'm just trying to help you. Just trying to bless you. Amen. And praise the Lord. So uh, uh, a woman, a wife should what? Respect her husband. And also, the, 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 the very last thing, women, I, I pray that this blesses you and that I help you on tonight. The Bible in, in, in chapter 3, from verses all the way from verses 3, well, really, you can go all the way up, you know, from 1 through 6. It talks more about the interior than what? More, more than the what? Than the exterior. Because the Bible says it in, in verse 3, look what it says. Do not let your adornment, that means when you dress up and you're, you, know, you, you, you try to get dolled up and look good and all that. Don't let your adornment. When you try to dress up, be merely outward. So you know what? <laughs> there ought to be some dressing out, <laughs> amen, and fixing up, <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and getting yourself together, amen, and dolling yourself up on the inside, amen, praise the Lord, right? Knowing that, guess what? I'm worth something, but at the same time, I'm worth something, but God has put in me, amen, what I need to be so that I'm able to outwardly share with others, amen, what God wants, amen. Because why? We could say I'm focusing on me, but if you're focusing on you and God ain't in it, amen, praise the Lord, and, it has, and you're not working on your heart, and, and, and you're not working on being a gentle and quiet spirit, and you're not working on being holy, and you're not working on being submissive. You could be working on you, but you could be working against what God wants you to do. Oh, Lord, have me, Pastor, you meddling. Well, I'm trying to help you. Amen. So, basically, it's saying there should be an inward focus on what? On the inward person. Amen. What kind of person are you? Amen. In the eyes of God. Amen. And praise the Lord. So don't let you, you're fixing up and all this other stuff. Be, now I'm not saying, you know what I'm saying? Don't look good and don't dress up and don't put on, you know, put, hey, I understand it, women. I get it. But at the same time, don't, oh Lord, have mercy. Woo! Don't let your dressing up be a cover up. Oh Lord, have mercy. I'm going to move because I'm about to get myself in trouble. Don't let your dressing up be a cover up. Amen. Let it be a showing out of what's already on the inside. Amen. And praise the Lord. Amen. Now, here we go. It also talks about, it also talks about the men, right? So watch. When you look at the men, right? The Bible is clear. It talks about husbands dwell with them with what? Understanding. You know the Bible helps with understanding? No. That guess what? <laughs> and listen, and women, I know, I know you're going to agree with me on this. And men, I need you to hear me, right? It says, deal with women with understanding. Now watch, listen to me and listen to me well. You got to understand, a woman is a complex being. Amen and praise the Lord. They birth babies. They experience a once a month event that no man will ever experience. Their hormones and their emotions do what they do. Amen. And praise the Lord. And so as men, the Bible says, guess what? You better deal with her with understanding. Because if you, your behind have to deal with what she's dealing with, go through with what she's going through. Do, your body have to go through the changes that her body got to go through. Let me tell you, brother, you'd break the first day. You have to feel it. <laughs> Amen. And praise the Lord. So it says, deal with your wife with what? With understanding. Be considerate. Amen. Don't hurt her. Don't down her. Amen. Be considerate of her emotions. Be considerate of her feelings. Be considerate that she's a woman. Be considerate that God did make her complex. Amen. Yes, she is. Amen. And women, you can attest to that. I know you can. Amen. Yes. He, he made them the way he made them. But guess what he said? Man, deal with her with a, what? Understanding. To know that guess what? I made her that way. But at the same time. She is one of the most precious beings that I created. Amen. And praise the Lord. And every man, every husband, amen, should treat their wife in such a way to where they're a precious jewel. Not do anything to hurt her or, or harm her. To, to actually build her up, hold her up, help her up, be there for her. Help her through life. Not always just agreeing with her and giving her what she wants. That's not what I'm saying, men. 
But I am saying, be considerate enough to know that, guess what? If she going through what she going through, help her through it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Amen. Not only that. Not only that. Understanding giving honor to the wife. You know what that says as a husband? That guess what? That's a time where I got to put my pride aside. And guess what? Let that woman know that she's worth something. Amen. Not be so wrapped up in me. Oh, Lord, have mercy that I cannot honor my wife, that I cannot be there for her, that I not, cannot what lift her up. Amen. So humility. Amen. Any man, any husband who does not have that characteristic, cannot, they're dangerous. Amen. So if you're looking for a husband and he doesn't have an humble spirit, watch him. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Watch him because you might have some trouble on your hands. Amen. And praise the Lord. So he should be considerate. Amen. He should know how to, he should know how, amen, to treat a woman. Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, hey, I'm just, he should know how to treat a lady. Amen. And praise the Lord. But he should also be humble. Amen. He should be humble. Now watch, I shared with you. This is not just when you're looking for somebody. Men, if you're married, guess what? <laughs> the Bible tells us this how we should be. Right? And so guess what? If you're struggling in these areas, you better go talk to God. So you can walk and talk according to the way God wants you to. Not only that, look at this last one that I want to share with you. It blessed my life. And when God showed me this, let me tell you something. It really blessed my life. Look what it says. It says, husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel and being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Watch this. How I treat my wife affects my prayer life. Oh, Lord. But watch. The Bible suggests that I have one. So you ought to at least be a praying man. Amen. If you're a husband and you're not praying for your family, if you're a, a, a husband and you're not praying and seeking God for guidance as to how to lead your family, if you're a husband and you're not going after what God wants and trying to figure out what God, where he's leading your family and where he wants you to go, can I help you? You're leading in the blind. Amen. You ought to be a prayer warrior for your house. Amen. Amen. Women, amen. Praise the Lord. You looking for a husband? <laughs> Look for a prayer warrior. Somebody who can pray for you. Amen. <laughs> amen. Not just pray on you. Amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Somebody going to catch that next week. Amen. Find you somebody who can pray for you. Amen. And praise the Lord. Somebody who knows the Lord. Amen. And praise the Lord. So I, I, I just had to share those things with us. Amen. Real briefly uh, on tonight. Amen. And, and I pray to God that it, it blesses you in, in some way. Now, I'm going to move into I'm going to move into another area. I may I may need to continue on into next week, but we'll see. We'll see. Amen. If you got to go. I understand you just got to go. I get it. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you got to go, you come back and watch the live. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I, I, I pray it, it blesses your life. Look what I want you to understand. When we take a look at the home, there's a structure. Now, many of you, I mean, it's been out since. I mean, forever, amen, the structure of the home. And we've talked about it, right? We've talked about it. Christ, the husband, the wife, the children, right? Christ, the husband, the wife, the children. Some people post it, you know, online, you know, uh, some, uh, uh, I've been to conferences where they've taught it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, books where I've read it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've, I've heard sermons that talked about it. Amen. So it's been out a long, long time. And so you've probably seen it somewhere. Some, sometimes people will post it like an umbrella. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, dealing with that whole idea of a, what a covering. Amen. Praise the Lord. And many people really, they downplay that whole idea of a covering. But let me tell you something. When you out of place, can I help you? You're on your own. <laughs> I'm just saying, when you out of place, you're on your own. So when God has established things the way he's established it, we've got to make sure we treat it. Amen. We treat it with the utmost importance. So watch. Of course, we know Christ is the head. Christ has got to be the head, right? But watch, Christ is the head. And if you go to the book of Ephesians, uh, it, it talks about that whole idea uh, of the husband, right? And it says this, it says that, uh, so uh, watch what it says. Husbands, love your wife uh, and cr as Christ, no, I'm gonna go back. Um, 
Let me go back. All right, here we go. Verse 23, uh, Ephesians 5 and uh, 23. Look what it says. For the husband is the head of the wife. The Bible is clear on that. See, we, we debate that and we go back and forth about that. You got people kind of trying to push it to the side, but that's God's order. That's his divine order. But watch, that doesn't give him the right to abuse and, 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 and misuse his power. That doesn't give him the right to mistreat people. That doesn't give him the right to talk to people any kind of way. That doesn't give him the right to do whatever he wants to do. But that does say he's responsible for what's going on in that home. Wow. And look what it says. Why submit to your own husbands as to the Lord? So watch. It says Christ, right? Christ is the head, right? In verse 23. Also, Christ is the head of the church, right? But watch. The husband is the head of the wife, right? Uh-oh. Why submit to your husbands? And if you go to Ephesians 6, it says children obey your parents. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Christ, the husband, the wife, the children. Now, mind you, when you look at the wife being underneath, it's a covering. It doesn't say she's not what? She's not equal in value. It's just saying her husband should be there to cover her. Amen. To cover her. You know why? <laughs> because that is his role. Amen. To cover her. That is what? His responsibility. Amen. He should be covering her in prayer. He should be covering her in the word. He should be covering her physically, protecting her. Amen. Praise the Lord. All those things. Right? It's a covering. And guess what? It goes down even to the what? The wife and to the what? To the children. Amen. So the husband and wife should do the same thing for the children. Amen. But watch. What I found is, amen, <clears throat> in many cases, the children are running the house. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You're meddling, Pastor. Well, hey, this is what you got. What do you mean? Well, I don't know about you. But uh, if I'm paying a bill, amen, for something that you're using, amen, praise the Lord, I pay that bill every month. You're going to look at me sideways because I asked you for something I'm paying for? Uh-uh. <coughs> you don't run this house. Amen, praise the Lord. If I tell you to clean this room, amen, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm paying the light bill, the water bill. I'm keeping you out the coal and all this. You're going to clean that room, amen, because what? Because you're going to clean that room. and But you have children telling the parents what they are not going to do, <laughs> what they don't feel like doing. Amen. Some of us, now I'm going to be honest, I see folk, oh Lord, Pastor, you meant, I see folk know they was raised better than that. Let their children do that to them. Shame on you. Shame on you. Amen. And praise the Lord. Shame on you. No, the children are not in charge. Can I help you? They don't know enough. They don't know nothing. Well, I'm going to let them decide. For real, something wrong with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You ain't letting them decide nothing. Amen. They don't know nothing. <laughs> Amen. And praise the Lord. You have to guide them. You have to lead them. You have to train them. Amen. Christ. <laughs> Christ. The husband. The wife. The children. Amen. That is the structure of the home. Mind you. Life happens. Things happen. Not every situation is the same. Things happen in life to where changes, amen, come about, amen. And you might have a single parent home, amen. It may not look the same as this, you know, this structure of Christ, the husband, the wife, and the children. It could be Christ, the husband, the children, Christ, the mother, the children, because you have single parent dads as well, amen, uh, 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 as well. So you got you to gotta understand, sometimes it's going to look different. But this is what I want to deal with. Amen and praise the Lord. Now, whew, it's about to get, get kind of tight, but uh, it's going to be all right. Amen. Just follow me. Amen. Just follow me. When the home is not like, watch me now, I'm going I'm to deal with it in two ways. When the home is not like. It traditionally, 
the Bible says that it should be all. Or, 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 or what the Bible says, and there's a there's a missing piece. Mother may not be, be there, or, or father may not be there. It may be just the mother and the children, or the father and the children. Listen to me, and listen to me well. We must understand that when it's not like that, there's more room. Hear me, and hear me well. There's more room for things to get more out of whack. Oh, Lord. Okay, preacher, where you going with this? I, I'm just trying to help you. Don't be allowing for, oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. You know you're a single parent, but and you're allowing folk in your house whoo, that ain't them children, daddy. Oh, Lord, you're meddling, pastor. That ain't your children's mother. And you just expect them, oh, Lord, whoo, Expect them to just listen and do whatever they're telling them to do. Can I help you? That's a sin and a shame, and that's selfish. Preacher, wait a minute, preacher. You got to help me out. Can I help you? When we as adults, when we as adults make decisions that we make, and we feel as though it's a love TKO, and we don't want to be with the one we said we was going to be with for the rest of our life. And now we feel we single and fancy free. We are doing our children a disservice. If we allow people to walk in and out of their life that they don't know. But that we want to hook up with. Because we want to do what we want to do. Can I help you? When it's a certain way. When that home is a certain way and it's just mother and children or father and children, can I help you? You better protect them children to no end. Don't just bring no knuckleheaded rascal in that house. Don't just bring no crazy female in that house. You better make sure that your children, oh Lord have mercy, are protected and covered. Because you can't just introduce them to somebody that they don't know. Because all they know may know is mama. All they may know is daddy, mama and daddy. So you're bringing somebody they don't even know. And now you're bringing trouble in your home. You're bringing chaos in your home. And you just expect, amen, praise the Lord. You just expect that child to take what, no, you done changed the game. <laughs> You done changed the game. You know why? Because you've wrecked things. And I want to tell you something. You ain't got to listen to me. But guess what? If you nobody ever told you this, you better know this. Now watch. I've never been through that experience. But can I help you? I'm around it every day. <laughs> and I want to help somebody on tonight. Listen to me and listen to me good. I don't care what you think about whoever and whatever that you used to be hooked up with. That child's desire is for mom and daddy to be together. Woo! Lord have mercy. Whether you want to hear that or not, that's, that, that's what's in that child's heart. So when you bring somebody huh, from the outside, get ready. Amen and praise the Lord because they ain't mama. They ain't daddy. Right? So guess what? Get ready for what you need to get ready for. Don't just expect them. Don't just expect them to be able to handle who you're going to bring along. Amen and praise the Lord. you got to make sure, be very, very, very sure, amen, that the individual that you're bringing in loves the Lord first, loves you second, and love them children. Amen and praise the Lord. And can I help you? It's a dangerous situation. Amen. And now watch. In many cases, hear me out and hear me well. In many cases, folk bring folk in, ain't even married to them. Ain't thinking about getting married to them. Don't even want to get married to them. But they got this one in and out of the house. Your children mad at you. They frustrated at you. They really want to tell you something, but they know if they tell you something, you're going to knock them dead clean in the mouth, and they're going to lose some teeth. Amen. Praise the Lord. But they're mad because they're watching you bring folk in their life that they expect, amen, you expect them to just now bow down and do whatever that person telling them to do. It don't work like that. 
Amen. It doesn't work like some of y'all wondering why you got hell in the house. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> no, you've got to make sure that you're doing it right by God. Amen. And praise the Lord. But watch, let them children, let them children be considered when you make your decision. Now, they grown and they gone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They ain't going to tell me what to do. I get it. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you got little children in that house. Still school age. Amen. Praise the Lord. Still living with you. Can I help you? You got some decisions to make. <laughs> yeah. You, you got some choices to make. You, you got some, some decisions to make. Why? Because every decision now is going to affect those children. Well, pastor, I want some affection. I need a man in my life. I need a woman in my life. You should have thought about that. Amen. Before you did what you did, you better think about them children and quit being so doggone selfish. Oh, Lord. Pastor, you're meddling. Well, I'm just saying, I want to bless you and not hurt you. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've got to consider that. Amen. We've got to consider that. And of course, we do have what you would call blended families where individuals do get married. Right. And now you have what you call a blended family. Well, pastor, help me out. Well, now you got those that where the parent of one uh oh, may not be the parent of the other. And you mixing that together. I want to help y'all. I'm not, I'm, listen, I'm not condemning it. I'm not knocking it down. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm not saying it should be done. But you better be careful. Woo! You better be careful. Because when you put all that together, you got some stuff to deal with. Woo! <laughs> you got some stuff to deal with. And so that's why, amen, there's some things I want to share with you. Lord have mercy. And I pray a blessing. Now watch. Mostly, I, I wanted to share this with blended families. But it applies to all homes. Right? It, every home can benefit from what I'm about to share. Right? Every home can benefit. But but I, I want to direct it toward. Amen. I want to direct it toward blended families. Why? Because you got to understand. When you begin to mix and blend and mingle two different families together, it can be bad. It could be something to deal with if you don't approach it, what, correctly, right? And so there's some things I want to share with you, just three little things that I want you to consider. Now watch, you got to understand, these are some things just to keep you mindful of when you're in that situation or if you're thinking about getting into that situation, because you got to be mindful of it. Okay, preacher, what are the things you want to share? Here's the first thing. The first thing, amen and praise the Lord, that I, I want us to consider on tonight. Watch this. Boundaries. Whew, if we were together, I say, let the church say boundaries. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Boundaries. See, when you bring those families together, everybody has to know their place. Everybody has to know their role and everybody's got to be on the same page or you're going to have a hot mess, right? So watch, if you blend those families, that husband got to know how far he can go in disciplining the child. But watch, be careful, right? It could be dangerous because now he really can't discipline like he really should because now his hands are tied. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Woo, Jesus, Right? The mother has to know how far she can go to discipline the child, right? When the child may not be their what? Biological child. Y'all can talk that noise if you want and make a difference. Amen. Y'all can talk crazy if you want and make a difference. Amen. And so boundaries. Everybody has to know their boundaries. The children have to know their boundaries, right? Hey, yeah. I'll allow you to do this, say this, go, but guess what? When you cross this line, oh no, it ain't going down. Everybody has to know their 
boundaries. Amen. And praise the Lord. But can I help you? That's not just in a blended family. That's all homes. Amen. That, that, but watch. It's, 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 it's way more vital in a blended family because of the, the dynamic of the makeup of the home. Amen. It's got to be tight. Amen. And everybody has to know their boundaries. Amen. Their boundaries. Watch. Here's the second thing. Okay, Rev, what's the second thing? The second thing is this. The rules of engagement. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. The rules of engagement. Oh, Lord, have the rules of engagement. Wait a minute. What do you mean? See, I've seen people where, oh, just call me by my first name. Hey, that's how you do. But just make sure. Everybody's on the same page and you're comfortable with it because over time you can say, yeah, you calling me. Okay, but you, you ain't had nothing to say before. So guess what? The rules of engagement. How do we engage each other? How do we interact? What? With each other. How do we what? Address each other. Uh-oh. Watching. How do we handle family issues? How do we handle when things happen at school? How do we handle when something going on in the house? Rules of engagement. How do we go and move forward and begin to handle things? Because somebody can go to do something thinking, oh, well, I'm good. And then, boom, they find out, oh, no, uh-uh, you ain't going to do that to my child. Now you got a problem. Now, when you got married, oh, yeah, us family. But now it's my child. Be careful. Right? So you got to make sure that everybody understands the rules of engagement. Amen. How do you interact one with the other? Amen. And praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Have mercy. It's tight, but it's right. And the very last thing is this. Solid communication. Listen well. Solid communication. Listen. Spe listen. It can't be what I thought. It can't be I assume. It can't be oh I I I I I, 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 I imagine that's what it. No, uh uh. Solid communication. You got to communicate clear. Don't leave anything. Listen to me now. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm directing this toward what blended families, but it applies to all families. Don't leave anything. You Lord, you got to get this one. Don't leave. Anything up for interpretation for somebody to figure out. No. Can I help you? You're setting yourself up. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You're setting yourself. Don't leave nothing open for interpretation. Everybody has got to be clear on what they mean by what they are saying. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm just being real with you on tonight. Because we've got to make sure we look at this thing correctly. And we're wondering why things are happening. And we're wondering why this is happening. Wonder why that child stay mad. Why that child can't get along with that child. Why this child treat that one so bad. Why this one doing that one. And why this one do... You know why? Because they're dealing with the emotional strain of your decision. I hope somebody got that on tonight. They are dealing with the emotional strain of your decision. And we cannot leave it up to children to be able to handle e adult problems on their own. Jesus, have mercy. Come with me if you can. That's why many folk need counseling in their old age. Because they done been scarred. They didn't have to deal with some stuff. They done been through some stuff. They, had to, they didn't come across folk that didn't care nothing about them. Amen and praise the Lord. And would do stuff on the side that nobody knew about. Amen and praise the Lord. Because that's who mama brought in the house. That's who daddy brought in the house. Why? Because they're dealing with adult decisions. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have I'm here to help you. I'm not here to hurt you. And I'm praying to God that we begin to look at this thing differently. The way God designed it. Christ, the husband, the wife, the children. When one is missing, it, it becomes Christ, the husband, or Christ, the man, the children. Christ, the, the, the woman, the children. Right? But you got to understand that guess what? You bring somebody in 
and then you bring another set of children. Can I help you? That's some adjustments that got to be made. You know why? Because if everybody ain't on the same page and everybody ain't jiving and ever. Can I help you? Whoo, Jesus, you're going to have trouble. Amen. You're going to have trouble. And that is why. See, now we're going to get down and get back to. See, many folk look at the Bible. And they look at God, they look at Christianity, they look at the church, and they try to give the church value based on what people do. Can I help you? What people do don't devalue God. What people do don't devalue the Bible. What people do don't devalue what God has said. No, it's because of that foolish decision, they're bringing shame, amen, to the church. But can I help you? No. The Bible lives with it. That's why the Bible says, until what? Until death do us part. Right? Un what? Until for life until death. That's how God designed it so we wouldn't deal with some of that stuff. Oh, Lord have mercy that we deal with. Amen. And praise the Lord. The, let me tell you something. God is wise. He's all wise. And he set it up the way he set it up for a reason. We the crazy one that won't listen to what he says. What? We should be. What? It says for life until death. Right? That's how God designed it. And if we would do it his way. Amen. We would have healthier homes. But because of our decisions. <laughs> Because of what we want, because of what we want to do, the children suffer. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The home suffers. Watch. Even the relationship between the husband and wife suffers. You know why? Because we have not considered what God has said. And we have not taken God at his word. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy. Pastor, okay, Pastor. You said all that. What else you got? I'm finished. <laughs> I, I, listen, some of y'all can't take no more. Amen, praise the Lord. You can't take no more. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave it where it's at. Amen, praise the Lord. I'm going to let you, I'm gonna let you marinate on that for a little while. Amen, and praise the Lord. Because why? Because God's word is true. God's word is true. You can debate it all day long. God's word is true and it's real. And what he says, <laughs> what he says is true. But we have to have enough faith to follow what God has said. Amen and amen. Again, I'm telling you right now, I'm, I'm not out of word. <laughs> amen. I'm just out of time. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go on tonight. I pray. I pray that you were blessed on tonight. Amen and praise the Lord. I pray to God that you would allow yourself to go to God's word and take him at his word. You know, we try to sometimes make make the word something that's just, you know, that, that only the preacher can unlock what it's saying. That's not the truth. And that should never be the truth. Right now, you should be able to go to that Bible, read that Bible, meditate on the word and let God talk to you. Right. You should have a tablet full of stuff. You, when you sit down and you talk with God, can I help you? You ought to get you a tablet and just start writing what God has placed upon your heart. And I'm telling you, if you develop a practice of doing that, you'll find yourself, you, 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 you'll run through tablets like, like man, what in, wow, what on this day, this, and you, you're looking at it you're like, wow, God will minister to you, but you've got to take God at his word and you can't allow yourself to just go through life, Right? Just kind of like passing by the word or just quoting a few scriptures and being happy with it. No, get saturated in his word. That's why, amen, St. Mary, you know, and some of you know, um, every now and again, I start us with reading the Bible from cover to cover. You know, and so this year, starting 2024, January 1, I began sending out text messages of daily readings of the word to get through the Bible in a year. Why, why you did that, Pastor? So that we can now become acclimated to the word. So that the word can now become something that's a part of us. Something that we read, amen, and it becomes what we live by. Amen. And so we've got to make sure that we let the word be what it needs to be. Right? And so we've got to make sure we give God his just due. Because let me tell you something. I can't speak for nobody else. 
I can't speak for nobody else. But St. Mary knows. I tell St. Mary all the time. And God forbid, listen to me. Don't, don't take this the wrong way. What I'm about to say, don't take it the wrong way. Right? But I, this is where this is where I am in my walk with God. Listen to me. If God takes everything away from me, everything, Lord, God forbid, if God takes everything away from me, I'm going to still have two things. He takes everything away from me and he still allows me to live. Got two things. What is that, Pastor? My faith and his word. <laughs> Listen, when everything else goes away, fades away, two things, two things, you ought to always remember you got your faith and his word. If he takes everything, everything out of your life, Strips you of everything. Allows everything to go away. <laughs> Your faith. And it's where, come in Job. <laughs> Job lost everything. But you know what he had? He had his faith. He had his trust in God's word. So shall we receive good and not evil? <laughs> so people of God, we've got to, we've got to allow ourselves to let the word be what it needs to be in our lives. Above and above anything else. I'm not saying you live a life to where you all sanctimony, your nose in the air, and you mistreating folk, and you know what I'm saying? You thinking you better than everybody. I don't know. Not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying that you have such a strong faith in what God has said that can't nothing come along to shake your faith. Can't nothing come along to, to move you to the side because you know where your help comes from. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So people of God, I pray to God that this series has blessed you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I wanted to get through it and I did. Praise the Lord. Um, and, and next week, next week, we'll start on something. Amen. We'll start on something a little different. Still praying on what that is. Amen. And praise the Lord. And so uh, my prayer is that this has blessed you in some kind of way. Um, if, if you got questions or if you just, you know, whatever, you know, shoot them to me, you know, you send them through messenger. Hey, people do it all the time. Amen. And praise the Lord. And, and, and I do my best from the word to share with you what I believe God is saying with, through his word. Amen. And praise the Lord. But I want us to be blessed. I want our homes healthy. I want God to be able to smile down upon our homes. Amen. And praise the Lord. Now watch. You don't have a pastor to where my home is perfect. I got everything all right. I got it down pat so I can just tell you whatever. No, but God has put his word in me to share with his people what thus said the Lord. Pastor has, listen, our home, we have our own struggles. We, we, we have our own ups and downs. We have our own mishaps. So we're not exempt. Amen. But guess what? <laughs> One thing about it. I, I'm just like Joshua. As far as for me and my house, <laughs> we will serve the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. And brothers out there, can I help you? You're going to have to develop a Joshua boldness. Amen. Amen. To wait for, for this house, we're going to serve God. Amen. And when it's time to get up to go to church, amen. Uh, you ain't ready yet? Get up. Let's go. Right? You don't send your family off. You bring them to church. Amen. Any husband should bring his family to church. Amen. And praise the Lord. <laughs> and if y'all ain't riding together, they're like, okay, now nah, uh, I'm going. But uh, y'all need to be there. Amen. Praise the Lord. I get it. Because, you know, we got different schedules and all that stuff. Hey, it is what it is. But at the same time, any good husband will lead his family, lead his family in Christ Jesus. Hear me and hear me well. Because Christ is his boss. Amen. Every husband should have Christ as his boss. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if Christ is not your boss, can I help you? <laughs> Guess what? You done messed up if you thought you was. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. No. Christ has to be the head. 
So you can now cover your family. And so now your family can be what it needs to be in Jesus. I pray to God you were blessed. I pray to God that the word bless you in some kind of way. And my prayer for you all is this. Seek God concerning the things that have been shared. Don't just take pastor's word for it. Go to the word. Read the word. Meditate on the word. Ask for God to minister to you. So that now you can what? You can apply what God is saying in his word. And it becomes ever present in your life. Amen and amen again. Saints of God, I love you. And there's nothing in the world you can do about it. Amen. I want to pray with you on tonight. And I pray that you would just allow yourselves to just seek God. Just seek God in all things. Just seek Him. No matter what it is. I mean, it, I mean, you 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 you're planning to go on a trip, seek God. I mean, you 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 planning to buy a house, seek God. You planning on buy a car, seek God. You know, you you got a decision to make about your family, about you know, a new job, seek God. Don't don't just make moves. Don't just make moves without His guidance. You need Him. You need Him. And also for your homes, make sure God is guiding your home, right? Y'all, we living on the prayers of of, of 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 some saints and some warriors of God that have, that have that have come on God's green earth that have gone on to be with the Lord. We're still standing and leaning on some of those prayers because God is faithful and he fulfills his promises. So guess what? I'm not crazy enough that, that I don't know. And guess what? That's some prayers my mama prayed that God, he kept his promise to her. That's how I'm able to do some of the things I'm able to do and have some of the things I'm able to have. So guess you got to pray for your family. See, God about your family. Lord, have mercy. Let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you for this evening. And we thank you for being so kind and so merciful and so gracious towards us. We understand, Lord, we need you. And we understand, Lord, that we cannot make it without you. Lord, move in our homes. Move in our, move in our minds. Move in our hearts. And Lord, just let your word be what it is and what it needs to be to us. Lord, I also pray for those that God, even for their physical health, mental health, financial woes, problems they may be dealing with. Touch right now, Father God. But Lord, you help me to understand something. Some of our health problems comes from some of our relational problems. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Some of our mental problems come from some of our connections to certain people. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Lord, some of our financial issues is due to us not seeking your guidance. So, Lord, help us to understand that we got a part to play in it all. Because, Lord, you can get us out of some stuff. But, Lord, how dare we get ourselves right back in what you got us out of. So, Lord, help us to begin making healthier choices so that, dear God, we can reap the benefit of living a healthy life from making healthy decisions. Lord, we understand and know there's some stuff going to come our way, Lord, that we had nothing to do with. But, Lord, we do understand that there are some things we're dealing with that are self-inflicted. So Lord, move right now. Help us right now. Help us to make the adjustments we need to make right now because we trust you and we believe in you and we trust in your word. Lord, move, Father God, within us. Have your way with us. Use us, dear God, even in all our feebleness, dear God. Have thine own way. We love you, Lord. <laughs> we thank you, Lord. We bless your name, Lord, because, Lord, you alone, all by yourself, is worthy. It's in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ 
Our Lord, our Savior, we do pray and ask it all. Amen. My, 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 my. Something about this song that just blessed my life. Uh, the guy that wrote the song, uh, his name is uh, Jonathan McReynolds. I know sometimes y'all, you know, y'all hear pastors sing certain songs, and, and you're trying to figure out. Well, I wonder who made who made that song, yeah? Because you know, it's not it's not an original piece. I didn't write the song. Now that now that's something down the line that pastor may get into. I, I'm not saying nothing about it no more. But, uh, you know, as far as writing songs and stuff like that, but at the same time, the guy that wrote this song's name is Jonathan McReynolds, a young guy, um, real gifted musician, real gifted singer, real gifted artist. And, and a lot of the music that he makes is relatable. You know, it's very relatable. And it's not your traditional, you know, it's not your traditional uh, uh, gospel music, but it's authentic and it's real. Amen. It's authentic and it's real and it's it's in its own way. Amen. And I, I thank God for, for him and his music. Amen. And um, th But this song, it really helps me to understand that when we look at life, we have to make sure that we don't let ourselves uh, let life be a drag because we may not like what we're going through at a particular time or, or, or instance. Uh, but we've got to make sure that we look at everything we experience and go through as something that God puts in our life to help us to draw closer to him. Right. And so we've got to make sure that 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 we don't look at life, you know, like some people are. Oh, if it ain't one thing, what well, is another that that's a that's a defeated mind. Right. That is a defeated mind. You're not walking in victory. Uh, you're really walking in, 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 in defeat. And, and can I help you? Those who have already won shouldn't be walking around like they're losers. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. We've already won. Right. We've already won. God has already won. Amen. <laughs> so can I help you? We can walk in victory. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. And so it's my prayer that we begin to look at our circumstances and the things in our life differently than what we do sometimes. Because we let life dictate to us how we're supposed to act and feel and think. When in actuality, God's word, his Holy Spirit, watch it now, is the one that should what? Motivate us to look at life the way we should. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Go and listen something like this. You already know it. May your struggles <laughs> keep you near the cross. And may your troubles show that you need God. Hey. And may your battles Hey, in the way they should. Hey, and may your bad days. Hey, prove that God is good. Hey, and may your whole life. Hey, prove that God is good. May your struggles, hey, keep you near the cross. And may your struggles show that you need God. Hey, and may your battles, yes, Lord, in the And may your bad days prove that God is good. Amen. God bless you, saints of God. Good night. I love you. God loves you. Ain't nothing in the world you can do about it. But just do this one thing for me. This one thing for me. Don't ever forget. Amen. Go tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. Good night, y'all. Love you. <laughs>